Hi everyone, and welcome back to Tokyo on Fire. Today is August 18th, 2016. Before we get into our episode today, I'd like to let you know that Tokyo on Fire is growing strong. We have more than 818 subscribers. Please hit subscribe. Google loves it when you subscribe. And more importantly, they love it when you share. So please tell your friends about our show and let's shoot for a thousand subscribers. Today is Thursday, August 18th. Last week was really important on the political and historical calendar for Japan. They commemorated 71 years ago the end of the Pacific War, and a lot of things were happening on the political calendar and in our neighborhood too, Michael. Well, we had this commemoration that happens every year, and the emperor gave his speech and the prime minister gave his speech, and everyone was remarking on the various whether there's going to be apology or not apology. Prime Minister Abe, as per his want, did not have the word apology in it while the emperor did, who, and they said it's been now two years in a row that he's used this phrase, fukaku hanse, reflect feel... upon it deeply that the emperor has done this and Abe has not responded. It's all a bunch of hooty who, but I, I don't get very excited about it. But I was very interested in how. Now that we've gotten past the 70th anniversary, how the situation surrounding Yasukuni and visits to Yasukuni by members of the Diet and members of the cabinet have transformed themselves. So I actually went to Yasukuni on You August were there of, on Monday. On August the 15th. A I national went, holiday. No. Uh, actually, it's not a national holiday. It is actually the almost the second to the last day of Obon. So most people aren't around. There are some people actually were coming back from their vacation, but things are still pretty sparse here in, mm -hmm. in, in Tokyo in terms of the trains are, are not absolutely crowded at this time of year. Still, I wanted to see what the scene was like. And uh, I, I have, my report is that it was a lot calmer than it was just two years ago on the 69th anniversary, last time I went. Uh, it's... Um, it seems to be slowing down, mm -hmm. in fact. It used to be kind of a place that you would want to avoid on the uh, day that commemorated the end of the war if you were a foreigner. No, it was not, not only if you were a foreigner, but there would be these confrontations between uh, left-wing peace activists who would actually go there. When, you know, if you're going to go there and you're a peace activist, you're going there for a confrontation. You want to, sub, in, you, you have no business being there mm -hmm. otherwise. Uh, and they would go and they would provoke the right-wingers who were there, and there would be scuffles and, and a, the riot police that were there would have something to do. This year, the riot police had virtually nothing to do. There were hundreds of them, all armored with their helmets right. and everything, and they were just standing around because no one seemed to be interested yeah. anymore in having this internal confrontation. Well, to give people a little bit of a flavor of what Yasukuni is like on this, this very important day, I mean, a lot of the writers go, they drag out the, the um, uniforms and fake the regalia, uniforms. They're fake not, uniforms, yeah, right, yeah. of, you know, the Imperial Army. Well, you know, there was there a few folks do that, and there are some young people, a lot of them are, are, are really aged folks who do this, and it's, it's all becoming kind of embarrassing to look at. Um, mm. it's, it, you do get your picture in the papers or internationally spread by the wire services. It, it, it's right. good cosplay, if you want right. to call that. But the spirit seems to be mm -hmm. draining out of it, or at least that was my direct impression. Right, and also the reaction from the Chinese also seemed to be a bit muted. I, I can't speak for the Chinese reaction. They, of course, got dug themselves into a huge hole here in Japan by having that invasion the of, of yes. that, that armada of fishing vessels show up. And it provided very conveniently the government of Japan with, or at least the, the cabinet and with this opportunity to say, okay, uh, you're in our debt. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese very openly and, and, and directly said, we don't want members of the cabinet to show up because that would be a provocation. And the Chinese, you know, they had already blown all their capital in, in this country with that. And they withdrew the ships and only a few members of the cabinet showed up at, the, at Yasukuni. 
And we're past the, the anniversary mm -hmm. with relatively right. little, you know, with, with actually a, a pulling back and a pulling away from uh, tensions. Has there ever been a day of commemoration where cabinet ministers did not visit Yasukuni? There was nearly the case during the first time Abe was, was prime minister. They, there, there was a really concerted attempt by the Abe administration to stay away. Mm -hmm. But it was when they came together at the noon time, they suddenly realized that not a single member of the cabinet had gone. And they quickly bundled Takaichi Sanai into a car and sent her because it was looking as though no one would show up in the first year that Abe was pr prime minister. Uh, he had also just lost an election and everything was completely confused. And eventually he was to resign only a month later. Uh, but it was, it was touch and go there. Mm -hmm. uh, and before Abe, there were times. It's never been uh, entirely free of ministerial visits. Uh, though I have to think about what happened during the DBJ times, whether there was a time that a, a full minister was not there on the day itself, that might, there might be something there. I have to review that. In terms of, of visitations, the visitations were really minor. And just like last year, all women, mm -hmm. at least in terms of cabinet ministers. Last year, all women. This year, the same. In This year, Marukawa, who is the minister for the Olympics, and Takaichi, who was the one who went a few years early, er, ago, uh, they showed up, but no other members of the cabinet were. And if Inada Tomomi, Right, the other female member of the, the cabinet, cabinet had, didn't show been in, up. had been in the country, she would have been the third. Uh -huh. But because she's defense minister and, and this uh, on a provocative militarized level right now. She's and now, not only that, but her views with regard to the, the, her recollection of what happened during the war. And, and history and, and, right. and all these matters. She conveniently had to go on a trip. An to, important trip, wasn't it? Yes, conveniently had to go to Djibouti. Mm -hmm. Desert part of Africa in what is probably the hottest part of the year. Probably not the best time to go. Okay, a political play, but I think it was actually pretty clever for the prime minister to send her off so that it just at least diminishes the potential impact that that would have caused. She was going to definitely show up. She has indeed her own special diet group called Tradition and Innovation, mm -hmm. which has as one of its major foci the joint visit outside the Minna De group, the, they have a, a special small group that she has that go to Yaskuni and she, make a big deal about she it. She goes regularly. She goes regularly. She has, ever, ever since she's been elected to the diet, this is the first one that she's missed. Mm -hmm. And that was it, was, it was just too provocative seemingly. And this need for her to go and inspect Japan's only overseas military base at this time was cooked up and she was sent off. She went off gleefully. She was loved the attention that her departure caused. And then there were all these people there. All the news organizations were all covering her departure. She was bathing in the glory mm -hmm. of it. And, and, and in a way that was actually uh, not entirely, uh, the, she's going to get uh, an earful when she comes back uh, for her ostentatious display of, of glee at leaving with all this attention on her. But we avoided having mm -hmm. the Minister of Defense show up, which would have been seen lo locally, that is to say, in the, in the East Asian region as a provocative act. Right. Well, we're past that. But the thing is, you're, you're right. The Chinese are not making such a big deal about it. The South Koreans are not necessarily making a big deal about it. Of course, you can always say that the South Koreans weren't fighting in the war. Mm -hmm. uh, they were, um, they were occupied. occupied. They, were, they were an annex to, to, to Japan. They were, in fact, participants in the war as fighters on the Japanese side. Mm, not necessarily voluntarily. Well, right. Not necessarily in a way that was the, that was highly agreeable to right. all of them. Right. Yes. Uh, nevertheless, I think that the history issue, the air is going out of it. It really is. And you can sense that. I mean, you were there personally 
Um, it's kind of like the Eagles making one more tour, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah, without Glenn Fry. Right. Uh, it's it's just it's it's we, yeah, it's, it's going it, to its place it, in in history where it probably belongs. And when I was there, one of it was striking to me was how indeed how old the few remaining persons who are actually have personal relationships with mm -hmm. those who are enshrined there how old they are and and how unlikely it is they'll be going to any more of these commemorative sure. events i mean they have they're you know if you wanted to 71 you, years 71 years uh you would have to be at 90 or close to it to have a direct connection mm -hmm. uh at that point a walk across a, a good part of tokyo in what is 35 degree weather in the middle of august is not going to be happening, right? And uh, but even the people who have as their organizing principle uh, the whatever Nippon Kaigi, for example. Nippon Kaigi, for right. example. I went. I went and I met with a few Nippon Kaigi members who were whom I knew at Yasukuni, and we ex exchanged pleasantries, and they talked about how things were and what it looked like. In terms of turnout for them, they were saying well, there's plenty more turnout going. And I said, Yeah, well, it looks like the, the same number as every year. Uh, but even them, they were, you know, they're getting old too. Mm -hmm. Sure. And at that point, it's it's really quite the nostalgia act. Mm -hmm. And I did not see when I went two years ago, there were a lot of families with strollers and kid, very small children. Not so many this time. Mm. True, it was on a Monday, and that may have been the, one of the differences. Right. Uh, but yes, there were people of all walks of life, people of uh, dressed in various ways. But the speeches and that I that I was listening to, everything is just mm -hmm. slowing down, toning down, and I guess that's just because it's turning into history. Right. Everybody watches to see if the prime minister shows up. He didn't show up this year, but he also sent a delegate to contribute a, an offering on his behalf. Yeah, but this year it wasn't Hagyu the Koichi, who was raised in status in terms of his job, uh, that he, ha he used to be simply an adv a special advisor to the prime minister. Now he's a, he's a deputy uh, chief's cabinet secretary. He is. He had been the uh, the delivery boy, uh, you know, just to be to be frank and, and mm -hmm. vulgar, for whatever it is that Mr. Abe wanted to send to the Yaskuni, both in in the summer and also in the spring and autumn festivals. He's moved up in status. They ha Abe sent someone else, mm. a load and. A Nishimura sensei. Yeah, a Nishimura sensei, but his, still his status is quite low. Uh, it's rising. I mean, this is a signal of his rising uh, status within the party. Would That's right. It's a signal of his rising status, but nevertheless, that there is a position in the government, once you achieve it, that you are no longer really eligible to be the delivery person mm -hmm. that you were before. And, and Hagyu, that clearly has risen above that rank. Well, some people would say that's a, a sign of, of terif terrific honor to go to Yasukuni on behalf of the prime minister to offer something that the prime minister has taken out of his own pocket. I mean, this isn't, these, these are not state funds. This is the prime minister going through a delegate. Yeah, but the thing is, is that it's really not what Prime Minister Abe wants to be doing, but he does it in order to not further inflame sure, sure. The, the region. But my feeling is that even if he goes, it's just not what it was. Well, maybe next year um, he might take that leap. If, since next year, it's 2017, he's still in office as president of the LDP. I think it's a little early, but clearly in 2018, when he's mm -hmm. either about to be reappointed or if he's in his final glory year running around the track to the cheers of thousands or maybe a few hundred, who knows, uh, maybe he'll go then. Next year, a little early. Okay. Maybe it's a little bit inside baseball, but frequently when the ministers go, they sign their names. I mean, everybody signs the, the visitation book. Mm -hmm. They sign either on behalf of themselves as a, an individual, or they use their title as minister of state. Yeah. So Abe himself, when he sent his offering, he sent his offering as president of the LDP, not as prime minister. Mm -hmm. However, Minister Takaichi, she signed herself in as, as minister of state. I am... 
you know, Takaichi Sane, I Sanae Takaichi, I am Minister of General Affairs and Communications. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that's true. The the mystery here is Marukawa, because she's the Olympics minister. Uh, it's 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 becoming very unclear what purpose she's serving or what Mr. Abe was thinking about mm -hmm. when he rewarded sure. her. Of course she's been a loyalist to him, but She's already in bad water, or at least with bad blood, with uh, Koike Yuriko, the new governor, having uh, campaigned against her election, uh, that is, Koike's election as governor. Now, on the international stage, she's the one, she's one of the cabinet members who goes. As Olympics minister, she has to be the one who is going to be dealing most directly with the issue of the arrival in Japan of North Koreans, South Koreans, and Chinese. And to be on the register as a commuter mm -hmm. at Yasukuni seems to me a bit bizarre. Right. Well, probably, I don't know if this is actually accurate, but it's a softer, gentler approach and trying to diminish the importance that Yasukuni projects to, you know, Southeast Asian countries who are opposed to visits by the government at Yasukuni. But it's a weird kind of sexism that... If women go to Yasukuni, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the new pattern within the Abe administration. I know it's, uh, maybe it's a flip version of womanomics, right. uh, but it's a very peculiar it's thing. Maybe that incremental step going forward so that it just kind of closes this, this wound up so that we can move forward. But then, you know, what is it the opposite of. Mm -hmm. If a man goes, that means Japan's a militaristic power and we cannot be trusted. I don't, I don't really understand the thinking, right. except that if it's a woman, it's okay. Japan observes the 71st anniversary of the end of the Pacific War. A lot goes on at this commemoration that sends signals to us. We're watching it. There's still a little bit of confusion about what all of this means. Stay tuned. We're going to be following up on it.